Good morning, Cloud community, and welcome back to Salt Lake City, Utah. We are here starting off day three of our three days of coverage on theCUBE. My name is Savannah Peterson. Bringing it home here with Rob Stretch. Hey, Rob, what a week. It's been awesome. I think the community has been super vibrant, and I think that it's just a lot of energy, even on day three, on a Friday. I know, it's still pretty packed in here. It's still a lot of people here on kind of getaway day, so I'm glad to on see that. On getaway day. Yes, on getaway day. And, yeah. you know, to that point, also very exciting news coming out today from Absolutely. the keynote. It can't wait to talk about it with our two guests. Ross and Natasha, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. How, how y'all holding up in the altitude, the dryness in day three? You know, I think the energy of KubeCon is just filling my heart so much that it's keeping me going. That and coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it's definitely a big part of it. So, for those who might not know about Andela, mm -hmm. give us a bit of background on the company and what brings you here today. Yeah. Natasha, I'll have you start. Exactly, so Andela is a private tech talent marketplace. Uh, we have 150,000 technologists spanned over 135 countries. Um, and so we help connect that amazing talent for contingent jobs with great companies that are looking for engineers, data scientists, developers, you know, you kind of name it. So we were founded 10 years ago in Nigeria. Um, that's where we started, that's, that's our roots. And we were, we were founded on the mission that, or the, the, the thought that brilliance is evenly distributed across the globe, but opportunities are not. And so it became our mission to connect that brilliance with opportunities. And that's, uh, that's where we're here today. We're, uh, we're a unicorn company um, and we're thriving. And about 60% of our talent are still based in Africa and Latin America. So two great emerging markets to, uh, to really tap. And, and some, go for it. Sorry, and I, yeah, I think, you know, I mean, again, seeing the keynote and seeing what was talked about, I totally agree that it's definitely, opportunity is definitely not for, you know, distributed equally. What, what was it like to really partner up with the CNCF and you know, talk, talk a little bit about the announcement that you made because I think, again, it's really, people looked at it and may have been scratching their head why this was, was, was happening. Why so, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll give you, we'll pull back the curtain a little bit. So I think to understand how we put this together with CNCF, it's important for my colleague Ross to talk about the learning program and a little bit of our history of the learning program um, and how that kind of fits into our marketplace just to give the reader or the listener some context. They might be reading. Yeah. Close captioning, I mean, baby. Right? Yeah. 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 Multi-form factor. Um, yeah, yeah, so Andana has a long history, a long legacy, as we mentioned, 10, ten years uh, old. Uh, but every year since our founding, we've always invested in upskilling an opportunity and invested in you know, um, different skillings uh, for African talent. So this is building on that legacy and we see huge demand for Kubernetes skills, like 90% of our roles that get created by companies wow. with Andela requires Kubernetes as a skill. So, you know, this is where it makes sense in terms of a strategic partnership, a strategic learning partnership. We want to, as we said, provide a, uh, a path to success for those talent. Um, but also for CNCF, we're growing the community in Africa. So we're really excited. Uh, this is the first step of hopefully a long relationship of doing these types of skilling programs. Um, and yeah, and, and adding to the legacy that we are, we've already had. Yeah, so, so to add to that, yeah. um, I used to work at CNCF uh, right when we were launching and was there for a few years, uh, right when we were doing the first KubeCons. And so coming to Andela and, part, and listening to the training programs that Ross has put together with companies like NVIDIA and Microsoft and AWS and Meta, I was like, oh my gosh, I wonder where the, if there's a big need for Kubernetes. Um, and so called Chris and said, hey, why don't we kind of combine resources and, um, and bring these trainings to a number of African developers. There's over 700,000 African developers. Um, and wow. we've actually trained 15% of that population. And so it's like, let's, let's bring Kubernetes certifications. So I, Natasha yeah. came knocking on my door and saying, hey, uh, I used to work here and I can make this. And yeah, she's fostered this great relationship and great great program with us, so it's been great working together. Even I mentioned we work on kind of different areas of the organization, but this has been a great partnership, yeah. It's, I mean, that's, that's really impressive. First of all, what an excellent Venn diagram of your background and experience and, and how inspiring, quite frankly. 
ninety percent of jobs. Yeah, that is. I, I got to bring that, it back there for a second. That is a that is a wild stat. I'm curious how we were, we saw in the keynote today the the adoption curves were we're really at an interesting moment right now with Kubernetes. Obviously, full tail is the platform of the future. You obviously would have known that already, Natasha, which is fantastic. How, how has that number shifted or increased, say, over the last two years and that ratio of jobs needing that skill set? Or was it always like that? I don't think, I don't, I mean, I'll have to go back to our talent matchers and check that. Uh, but I don't think it's always been that way. Yeah. Uh, when, you, when you put in a job rack and you're like, hey, these are some of the skills that I'm kind of looking for, you know, our clients understand like we're not going to have a, a vast population of certified talent, you know. The, the, the trainings can be complicated and really like mastering Kubernetes can be complicated even 10 years later. Um, but I do think that it is the de facto kind of standard for container orchestration. Um, it's very much needed in the infrastructure stack. And so it makes sense that the demand's there. Yeah, so we checked with our matching team, like what what is the demand for that? And that was the kind of most real, real time data we got just before we came here today to see what is the demand we're seeing and that we want to meet that demand, you know. So and in relation to the way Andela works, you know, we're this large uh, private talent marketplace. We ha uh, all the technologists go through a rigorous assessment, um, English proficiency, technical interviews, soft skills, professional skills. And so part of that, the technologists, we're equipping them with skills so that they can pass that assessment and then be matched to the right role to meet the companies, uh, companies worldwide demand for those skills. I was going to say, and part of it, it, it seems to be that there's this huge gap, right, that everybody talks about, but then there's still a lot of layoffs and other things, and we were talking about that earlier, and we, we see it you know, month over month. How do you see the market changing from you know, the skills that are needed versus the skills that are out there to that point and saying, hey, you know, is it an upskilling thing? Is it a reskilling thing? What, what's happening in that part of it as well? I, I, think, it's, I think it's a bit of, so, I think it's a bit to do with upskilling is definitely a piece, um, but I also think if you are an engineering manager or a CTO, and I, you know, I've been hearing lots of thoughts, getting a lot of feedback here uh, in relation to, yeah, I'm not finding the right talent, I'm not finding, you're, it's because they're accessing the same talent pool. So that's where, like with Andela, you're accessing a borderless workforce, you're finding the right talent, Anywhere, if you're if you're accessing the same talent, it's constrained by the nature that you're accessing it uh, alongside with your competitors and other companies that are all trying to find the right skill. While in Andela, that's why we're you know connecting that brilliance with opportunity with our talent, and that's why we continuously invest them, invest in their upskilling and learning programs, so that they're always competitive and of the highest quality for our clients. Yeah. It's it, so important, I mean, and you with the GitLab background, all remote always, not surprised yeah. you're working in borderless. I think <laughs> there's a there's a, a big parallel there and, and also passion, I mean, that's how you and I met originally. But I think, I, I'm curious because I, I do think this is interesting, right? So, so I'm Silicon Valley based, lots of layoffs in the Valley. Mm -hmm. Lots, actually, honestly, the West Coast, you're seeing a lot of interesting stuff in, in Techlandia. Obviously, on your side, you're seeing this huge craving for Kubernetes talent and upskilling. What's the discord there, you think? What's the mismatch? I think, um, I think if you look at it, it's really what are the projects that are going forward for you know, the coming years? How can we be more efficient? What is going to have a return on the business? How is it going to get us to the next area that we need to get? And then, it, then you look at the talent and you're like, okay, we have skills gaps in these areas. Um, and how do you fill those skills gaps? So do you have the right skills in your organization? And are some roles redundant? Are some projects moved? And so you actually don't need this kind of group of people because we are no longer working on this project. Everyone's moved to AI. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, you know, how is that going to impact you know, platform engineering? And that was another big topic. Security was another big topic this week. Um, and so you're going to start focusing a lot more on, on talent with those skills. And then I think that's when you kind of start looking outside of your organization. You're like, how do I find these? And then also I think part of the struggle that companies are, how do I upskill my current talent? 
And that's why I think these types of partnerships should be inspiring to other companies to reach across the aisle and say, I have these resources, you have these resources, let's partner together so we can all upscale. And I think that's why conferences like KubeCon are so important, because if you walk around to these different sessions, people are upscaling themselves here. They are collaborating as a community, they are sharing things that they have done and things that have blown up and things that have worked and new ways to work on, on everything. And so I think that um, that's going to be really important when we look at tech hiring and tech shortages. Where, where do you see a lot of, like what types of companies are coming to? Because I, I look at it and go borderless. For some companies, like smaller companies, it's, mm -hmm. it's tough, right? Trying to hire in different time zones and be async and things like that. What are the types of companies that can take advantage of this marketplace in Africa in particular? Yeah, we have every type of company. Every type of company. We have enterprise clients, we have small and medium uh, businesses. Um, and I think, uh, actually to your point, um, so what Andela does is, like if you're, if you're, as I mentioned, a company and you're thinking, well, I don't really want to set up and start you know, spinning up an entity, say, in Argentina or in Nigeria or Kenya, but I, but I want to access that talent pool. That's where Andela comes in. We're dealing with the pay, the compliance, the assessment. We've, we've sp spun up uh, talent for client engagements in as fast as 24 hours because we've done this rigorous assessment. So yeah, like, and, and that's to, you know, but based on a, you know, meeting what they need, um, getting that information, you can actually, as a client, you can go onto Randella Talent Cloud and self-serve with fully vetted talent, completely certified, and have gone on uh, and actually showcases their experience of other engagements they've done with clients of ours. But in addition to that, you can also, we have a, a matching team that are very, very bespoke and rela relating to, I want to hear your needs and requirements and possibly even identify ones you haven't even thought of yet. I was wondering uh, about that because I bet you have a really good lay of the land in terms of, of that complete holistic skill set that somebody needs to really be successful at one of these yeah, We like being a strategic partner yeah. with our clients and building that rapport and figuring out their needs. Uh, and, and, and you know, serving them. Yeah. yeah, and some of our longtime clients are GitHub, so we work really closely with GitHub. Uh, the Weather Channel, which is part of IBM, um, MasterCard Foundry is another right, great one, Kinship, uh, which is owned by Mars Pet Care. Those are all some of our really long-term clients that we've worked with. I think GitHub we've worked with for seven years now. Wow. Um, and so we've got a long, great legacy um, of, of of helping these companies find the talent that they need when they need it. So, I and that's, that's awesome, what a great master. I mean, 24 hours, I, it sounds, very compelling data coming out oh, of yeah. here. I'm curious how long, and this could be an interesting metric, but how long does it take the average person who comes into the program to, to get upskilled, let's say these 20,000 developers in Africa, for example, how long do these learning programs typically take? Yeah, so this is a multi-year partnership, so what we'll do is we'll do a learning curve, like a, a, a kind of a curve of ramping up. So we'll start with, I'm not sure what the number, what, what we'll start with first, we'll work with CNCF on that, but essentially we'll run a learning program with different cohorts over multiple years, and so we might start off with like 5,000 learners in the first segment and then ramp up to 10 and then work and go from there, and then, continuously and in that very agile way, you know, learn from each cohort and find out the specific needs and demands. And we've done that, as Natasha's mentioned, we've done that multiple times with different partners. Uh, we did it with Google, we had a large uh, developer program with them over five years, and we started small and worked our way up. But what's exciting about this one is that this is our largest one from day one. So, and we're, and, and we're even already talking about what we can do after, so we're already thinking about that. Yeah, they had some great certifications that were announced uh, this week, and I was like, ooh, telemetry, could that be next? Oh, platform engineering, can we, yeah, can we do that? So, so this that. is the first of hopefully many things to come. Even though I'm thinking about the implementation of this and, and how we're going to structure it and, um, and we're going to launch it for talent uh, in 2025, we have to think. We have to think ahead in order to keep up with the different trends and uh, and, and make a, you know good strategic bets on different skills. You know, so that we keep our talent highly competitive, highly trained uh, to meet the, the demand of tomorrow. Essentially, yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And the open source community is such a good, speaking of the Weather Channel, such a good way to forecast what that skill set might be and, and what those certifications might need to be very wise. You know, Tasha to be walking around and thinking about yeah. that. Yeah. How long for the developers themselves, how long does that cohort generally last? Uh, so roughly, it depend. It really depends on the certificate. Figured, certificate, yeah. yeah. So um, we'll base it on like the tip. Like ba I would say on data on on typical learning uh, outcomes and achievements. Like how it was the average length. So like KCNA could be like somewhere in the region of two to three months. Also depends on the level of experience that. Uh, that the uh, technologist already has. So this is like open, it's going to be free for um, technologists in Africa. And like, we don't want it to be a case where you have to have lots of years of experience with Korea. That's not who it's for. It's, it's meant to be completely inclusive, open. We're going to be, um, you know, you could enter from day one, you could be, you know, uh, 27 years old, you may have done one. Uh, you know, one to two years of experience. But well, I'd say we're going to get a lot of demand for the CKAD from like senior software engineers based in, you know, Kenya, uh, 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 Nigeria, uh, Rwanda. So we're we're really looking forward um, to uh, facilitating that that conduit of, of learning for them. I love it, it's so exciting. It's the national bird of Kenya on my arm, actually. Oh, right. It's so, meant to be. Yeah, so you guys talking about this the whole time, I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm getting all these feels. I can see it, I can hear it, I can smell it as you're and, talking. And that's yeah. part of the iterative process as well, is to find out what is the average length for a learner. Because we don't. it's not yeah. about doing things quickly, it's about doing things well. You know, we're a big believer in that. It's like it's not about how fast you can learn; it's about how well you can learn. And do you really take away those learning outcomes that we want you to achieve? There's also elements of community fostering. You know, yeah. and not just about joining Andela and our Andela learning community that we've built up with over 150,000 technologists, but joining this wonderful community as well, and fit and bridging that for them, like doing cube days, meetups, hackathons. So even though we'll be focusing on the certification first sure and um, there'll be elements of like how can we make that connect yeah. uh, so that those Andellans uh, you know join these wonderful meetups and join these wonderful people in, in the community yeah we're all for all the wonderful community activity and shared learning and and yes. those community activities in, in enhance that learning that you're providing through the certification so it all it's all very cyclical it all, it all works very symbiotic I should say rather it all works we very well together. We could have a KubeCon in Nigeria or Kenya in the future. Yeah. Fingers I'm, crossed. I'm, I'm here for that. For that would record. be fun I'm right? Definitely, we're definitely going Rob. If I that, know if we, that we put the we put the bug in. Yeah yeah now, no, now let's rally you around it. Here first, folks. You all heard it here first. <laughs> uh, last question for both of you because this has been fabulous. Yeah. When we're hanging out at the next KubeCon, when we're in London, what do you hope to be able to say then that you can't yet say today? Oh gosh, I think it would be amazing to give an update on like the community response to this, the, the developers in Africa, like how do they respond to this? How many people applied when you put the application out yeah. in January? I mean. Oh yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, that we'll be definitely cool. be giving a progression update and then hopefully like a roadmap of other things we might be doing as well. Yeah. Oh, like, a roadmap would be so nice. Yeah, like well, a roadmap. We can't wait to yes. hear all about it we'll across be there. the pond. I love it. Ross, Natasha, thank you so much for coming to hang out with us this morning. Yeah, pleasure. And thank congratulations you. on such an exciting announcement today and, and, and what a thoughtful partnership. Just warms my heart as much as it excites my brain. So well done. No worries, and Rob, thank, thank you. you for hanging out. Oh, no, thank you. This is a pleasant way to start our day. Yeah. I, I agree. I like talking about community to kick things off. <laughs> yes, you and, I, you and I absolutely, absolutely. love it. I hope you're feeling as inspired as we are this morning here in Salt Lake City, Utah. It's day three of KubeCon North America. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.